a lot to love about winter, especially when you're snuggled up somewhere warm, but I definitely don't enjoy the colds and flus that seem to come with the season. Fortunately, Indian cuisine comes to the rescue, with many dishes containing natural ingredients that boost the immune system and speed up recovery. Yuvika has been paging through her favorite winter recipes, so let's see what's on the menu. I'm one of those people that enjoys entertaining all year round and when the temperature plummets, it's time for hearty comfort food. I'm planning a bit of a winter feast tonight and on the menu, garlic cream livers for the main course, chicken and prawn paella and for dessert, a luscious coffee cream cake. I'm starting out with a paella and for that we've got sunflower oil into the pan. Swirl the oil around the base. And I've heated this pan up already. Now chicken thighs. I've left the bone in there, add lots of flavour. And I prefer these to chicken fillets. I think it has more flavour. So over a high heat, let's get these golden brown. These are golden brown. Sealing them ensures they stay juicy and moist. Remove them from the pan. Add a touch more oil. Cinnamon stick and a bay leaf. Fry those until they're fragrant. And next, add some sliced onion. And then season with salt. The onions are golden brown. Now ready for the next ingredient. Some garlic. This is fresh garlic that I've crushed. Two green chilies. Give that a quick stir. Rice going in. I'm using paella rice for this. It's short grain rice. Cooks quite quickly. You could also use basmati rice if you like. And next, two teaspoons of smoked paprika. This adds a lovely flavor and aroma. For an extra bit of heat, just a teaspoon of red chili powder. quite gentle, you don't want to break the grains up too much. And fresh thyme. Now add some red peppers. Gently stir that through. Pail is a really festive dish, quite comforting and hearty. It almost feels like a happy biryani. Next ingredients going in, stock. I'm using chicken stock for this. About 750 mils. Some tin chopped tomatoes. I've got pure Spanish saffron here. Pour that in. I've heated this in a dry pan and infused it in some water. And then pop the chicken thighs back into the pan. Some lovely aromas wafting through this kitchen. There's saffron, smoked paprika, red chilli, garlic, fresh thyme. It's really going to be a feast. Reduce the heat and cover the pan with a tight-fitting lid. Let that simmer for about 20 minutes. I'm going to start with the coffee cream cake now. I've got four eggs in a mixing bowl and I whisk them until they're light and fluffy. Now, add the sugar. And keep beating. light and fluffy, the sugar slightly dissolved. This is a basic sponge cake mix. I'm jazzing it up with some hot coffee. Also when you're making this cake just remember to ensure your bowl is free of any grease or you won't get the eggs light and fluffy. To this a cup of flour. Two teaspoons of baking powder going in. Use a spatula and fold those ingredients together. Next, in goes some strong coffee. Vanilla paste. Generous glug. And to that, a little water. 
and sunflower oil. You can also make a buttery cake, but I find the oil sponges much lighter. Again, work those ingredients together. Pour that into a greased and lined baking tin. Use a spatula to scrape the sides and the bottom of the bowl. Tap the tin down gently. Bake this off in a preheated oven, 170 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Let's have a look at the paella. That's coming along quite nicely. It's important not to stir or the rice does turn mushy. I've heated the pan. Let's start with the chicken livers. Sunflower oil into the pan. This is a really special pan. It belonged to my great grandmother. And every time I use it, I think about all the generations of women that I've used it. My great grandmother, my gran, my mom, and now me. Onions into the pan. Sauteing these onions. Now I'd like to season with salt. I'd say about three quarters of a teaspoon. The onions are golden. Deep golden also works quite nicely. They add a lovely flavor to the chicken livers. I gather those into the side of the pan and remove them from the oil. Lightly coat the livers with some cake flour, some seasoned salt or chicken spice, and toss them lightly. Remember you've added salt to the onion as well, so don't over season. And pop them into the oil. Chicken livers aren't the most glamorous ingredient to cook with, but they are absolutely delicious, especially served with some crusty French bread, garlic chili sauce. It's really delicious. Flip them over. The onions going back into the pan. They're lovely and caramelized. Next, some garlic, lots of garlic, and green chili. Now you can fine chop the green chili. I just leave them whole. It's quite rustic. Once the garlic is fragrant, pour in some chicken stock. And now I'm going to spice up these livers. So red chili, a teaspoon. Next, you can use a Cajun rub or aromatic garam masala. About two teaspoons. This has cumin seeds, cinnamon sticks, bay leaves. Stir that through and bring it up to the boil. It does seem like it's heavily spiced with green chili, red chili powder, chicken stock, and a fragrant rub. But the reason I'm doing that is I'm adding cream, and cream tends to make everything quite mellow and bland. Lastly, the fresh cream going in. about 125 mils. The creamy sauce has thickened. There are a few tempting green chilies floating about. This is the perfect starter for a cold night. Let's have a look at the paella. That's come up quite nicely. You can see it's not bubbling at a fierce heat or at a high heat, just gentle simmer. We don't want to mash the rice up. And lastly, I'm going to fry off the prawns. Ooh, that's a heavy pot. Switch on the pan and in goes some sunflower oil. Just a tiny bit. Add the prawns. Now you can cook this on the side like I'm doing right here, or you can add them to the paella with the rice. Season with some salt and black pepper. Now add some butter to the prawns. That keeps the prawns moist and prevents them from drying out. And lastly, some coriander. Sprinkle that in. Now when you cook prawns, always for a short time over a high heat. And pop those over. Switch off the heat. Lastly, more fresh coriander. Traditionally, parsley is used, but I think coriander has the best flavor. That's ready to serve. I'm going to leave the lid on so the flavors infuse. Let's finish up on the cake. Finishing touches, I've got some espresso coffee here. Just pour a little over the top. Use the back of a spoon 
to gently press that into the sponge and make sure you work it all the way to the edges. Now by working this around you prevent the center of the cake from getting quite soggy. And now for the cream. This is mascarpone cream. I've whipped this with some fresh cream, sugar and vanilla. Use a spatula and spread that over. No fancy icing or frosting techniques needed for this one. Now let's garnish this with some fresh cherries or you could use any berries that you like. A few mint sprigs going on top. A piece of dark chocolate. You could also use some meringues. And then a few more cherries. Lastly, drizzle over some chocolate. You can use whatever you have. And creating a swirl. Oh, that's the last bit of chocolate. That's the coffee cream cake done. I've created the perfect winter feast and now I'm going to create the perfect ambiance. We're lucky enough to enjoy this feast next to the fire. I'm going to sit as close to the fire as I can get. Here are the perfect dishes to my winter feast. We've got creamy garlic livers, chicken and prawn paella, and for dessert, that luscious coffee cream cake. The secret ingredients for hosting a successful feast, however, are family, friends, great conversation, and much laughter. But most importantly, to cook with so much love that you warm the hearts and the souls of your guests. I hope you enjoy the feast.